You don't have to be a game chef like Mark Gilchrist to appreciate that no one wants pigeon poo in their sandwiches. But when the skies start to darken thanks to bird numbers around wheat storage barns, it's time to send some of them to the big grain store in the sky. So uh, you've got a few pigeons here? Got a lot of pigeons, a lot of ferals now, built up over well, a long time now. But, yeah. What sort of problems do they cause you? We're in various uh, schemes that, that basically we're not really allowed to have any sort of pigeons around the grain stores, these food stores. Yeah. So, you know, you just don't want birds messing in the stores. So hopefully we will be able to sort them out today. That's what I'm hoping, yeah. Right, so, yeah. Um, and you're very kind of let me shoot a few pigeons here. So the least we can do is try and do some feral pigeons. That would be good. And you, kind, you kindly put some wheat out for us yeah. in strategic spots. And yeah. there must be about five or six hundred quid's worth of wheat on the floor there, <laughs> yeah. the way the price if is only, at the moment. If only. <laughs> we will be gathering it all up afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, um, when, when Roy's finished, he'll individually pick each grain up and put it back into the store for you. We'll be checking. Mark is joined by Roy Lupton with his Air Arms air rifle. To avoid damaging the roofs, we need some subtle, more refined shooting. Giving them both barrels will win no friends here. With a little of Farmer Mark's precious wheat on the ground, we're hoping to get the birds dropping in. But first, we're going to have a quick whiz around the yard. Roy takes a few birds, but the guys think that the best bet is a two-pronged approach. Roy picking the birds off with the air rifle, Mark keeping them moving with the Maxis on the neighbouring field. What's the, what's the game? What we're going to play out today? We're going to have to get you to go and uh, shoot them off the roof, and and I'll go down to the bottom there with a shotgun because every time that bunch comes up, if they come out and I can get three or four out of the bunch, Bun yep, that's it. and they go back in, we're very quickly going to rack up, rack up some numbers. I think if we can uh, just pick them off when they're 25, 30 yards with the air rifle and you know, set you keep them moving, hopefully we'll stand a bit of a better chance. Well, we'll go and give that a go. Okay. I'll go and stand behind that hedge. I mean, I don't need to build a very good hide because there are only ferals and, you know, it's about <laughs> my level, right. I'm afraid. So there we go. All right, mate. Excellent stuff. With Mark installed, Roy starts working the yard. The birds are already a bit skittish and half of them have got the flock out of here. But there's plenty to keep us busy. Roy is, of course, happiest taking shots with the backstop. Although the yard is empty, we only reserve skyline shots when the field is the only place the pellet can fall. Now, not every shot finds its mark, and there are some lucky birds out there. Like a scene from The Matrix, it's a perfectly timed getaway. This second bird nearly gets a glancing blow to its leg. Then there's this wood pigeon feeding on the ground. Now with the wood pigeons, they're a much tougher creature to kill with the air rifle, so you want to get a nice headshot if you can. If he doesn't hold his head still, I'm going to try and go through and hit the spine. But as I say, these are much tougher creatures than the... He doesn't really want to hold his head still, come on. Oh. Should have shot the one at the back then. He held his head still for me. There we go, hang on. What on earth happened there? So I've just done the replay on that pigeon that was sitting there in front of the, uh, the coil of yellow hose there. Um, took the shot and you can see the crosshairs are perfectly on. So it should have been a, an absolutely spot on shot for just taking the head out or just dropping down into the neck. Um, but you can see perfectly the pellet going off to the left hand side and there's no wind because we're in a, a courtyard surrounded by barn so it's, it's not windage that can just be down to the deformity and the pellet you know that particular pellet might have had a slight crease in it or something like that and uh, that was enough to uh, just crease the back of his neck or just take a few feathers out of the back of his neck and away he went so but, uh, you know it really does look good though. Roy has zeroed the rifle at 30 yards so when we have a couple of birds around the 50 yard range we have to start looking at bullet drop more closely it all depends on the pellet drop here. So he's just over 50 yards away. 
the pellet drops nicely into the chest. As Roy reloads the magazine, he finds a damaged pellet. Not spotting one earlier might have been the reason for the Woody's close shave. So you can see on that pellet there, um, we've got a, a big deformity there. I just put it in the magazine and then noticed how a shape it was. So what I'd probably done on that wood pigeon is had a pellet in there that was like that. So it's not going to fly true to target. So that's probably the you know the, what we're getting and that's not necessarily the fault of the pellet manufacturer um, that can just be down to the storage of, of how you have, have your pellets if you drop the tin or if you drop pellets on the floor and pick them up and put them back in that is what you can get so you can get deformities in there so uh, you know it really does pay to be very careful with your pellets and uh, make sure they don't get deformed and knocked about too much every now and again we hear a boom from the other side of the farm so we know Mark is getting some sport the real downside is that I can't really shoot up that way and there's quite a lot coming from that field over there back, back over the farm and I can't shoot into the farm obviously uh, and there's some of them are coming inside of that line over there right. I don't I just don't want to shoot over that way because it's it's not long before you get to the road and there's all the buildings and workers and stuff that way so I've only really had stuff out in that angle yep. um, but yeah, I think, I think they're going to come back. I can't believe they'll stay away forever. Back to the air rifle and Roy gets another couple of good shots off. This one is an excellent headshot. It's so important to practice so that you're confident of finding a very small target. So obviously you can see this pigeon was shot in the back of the head there. So that's the entry wound there. And he was just poking his head up over the gully. And when you're shooting um, anything with an air rifle, obviously you've got um, very little room for error. So you either want to be taking a headshot, a neck shot, um, or obviously through the vital organs, and preferably if you can take the spine out as well, because then they, uh, they drop on the spot or tend to drop on the spot. So uh, you've only got a very small margin for error though, when you think that the main part that's going to kill the pigeon is just behind the eye so you've got a very small target there so it's probably about the size of a, a five pence piece if you're looking at him side on so you know taking the taking away the feathers and everything else it doesn't really give you much of a target you know you need to make sure that your, your air rifle is spot on and that you've practiced from shooting from lots of different positions so you're used to shooting from a standing position or a kneeling position or whatever else so you can ensure that the, your pellet is going to end up where you want to get to as the afternoon marches on the number of birds above us is falling they know something is up and dead birds on the roof don't help things have also dried up for mark so it's time to call it a day and make further plans to tackle the problem here he was very appreciative we made the effort which is about the only thing that matters, that's, really, that's all you it? can do though isn't it as long as you're trying then uh, it keeps everybody happy and there's a bit of ferret food there as well so super there's, there's three woodies in there there's some mark food as well <laughs> there's a bag of about 50 birds. Mark scores about 15 with Roy taking out the rest, all helping to keep your cheese and pickle sandwiches pigeon free.